we have one question that has come through. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is as follows. What if the person doesn't argue, but let's say diminishes Shia or Muslims, treats them as second class? Is it a good reason to raise a bit of a dispute, make some points to establish the honor of Shia or the honor of Muslims? Or should we just ignore when someone shows such an attitude? It depends. Uh, if someone is, for example, insulting, offending, and it's just up to uh, you know him. I mean, it's not expanding. It's not uh, spreading. It's not confusing others. It's not inviting others to do the same. Someone does something small person group it's even other people you know don't like this so here many times it's better if you had some discussion and try to clarify that person didn't accept just leave it you know we have this uh, saying that al batilu yamutu bi tark batil if you don't mention it it will die. Sometimes by mentioning bottle, you are giving life to bottle, and you are yourself also spreading this bottle. You say no. Uh, so someone says to you something, then you go and the public say, "This person told this to me, and this is my answer." So you are yourself spreading this through your own uh, contacts and platform. You are spreading this. So many times when people do something wrong, we should have an assessment whether it's going to spread or it's going to be remaining there. If it's going to remain there, you shouldn't, you know, uh, confront that person with arguing. Yes, you can uh, strengthen your position indirectly. So for example, if he has mention something and people have not heard it's not a spreading but uh, still you can you know in a constructive way uh, strengthen your position so you know for example uh, if we have such idea for example why is it for that if it is something that you need to educate people but sometimes there is kind of a systematic attack and it's uh, not from one person or one politician it's coming uh, through a party or for example they are making policies based on that they are making decisions based on that uh, media is you know taking on this as a nice you know uh, subject for themselves that they want to work on it mm -hmm. so in such cases then we have to respond but respond doesn't need to be harsh all the time doesn't need to be you know emotional very I think calm very relaxed, very logical, free from emotional uh, expressions, just say the truth. And don't judge about the intention. Many times we judge uh, about the intention. Oh, these people are bad people, corrupt people, you know, supported by corrupt people. No. F forget uh, this side of it. If you have evidence that, for example, this person was paid you know, by so-and-so, and that evidence is something that you can convince the court, show that evidence. Otherwise, don't accuse them, and it's not going to help. Just objectively, in a calm and relaxed way, try to explain. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of details, so just I said a few points. I love us. Uh, we got another uh, question uh, here on the chat. The question is as follows. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Was there another stance where Christians considered the honesty of the Prophet وسلم, without necessarily converting to Islam? Shukran, Shaykh. Was there another stance where Christians consider uh, the You mean 
uh, there were cases that Christians accepted uh, that the that they accepted the they, prophet they, is honest. They recognized the honesty. Yes, of course. Yes, yes, without conversion. Yeah, the, because the, Qur the Quran talks about Christians that when they hear the verses of the Quran, the uh, revelation to the prophet, the tears come down. Some Ahlul Kitab, the Quran says, uh, when they hear what has come to you from the Haq, from the truth, they feel very, uh, uh, you know, grateful, very humble, and out of joy, out of respect, they cry. We have also such Christians. Mm. Or the Quran says that, you know, they are closest people to Mu'mineen, to believers. Their mawadda is nearest to the believers. So, uh, and recently, you know, also we have, you know, some people who believe that even the Prophet, mm. they may not accept, uh, you know, that for example, there was a revelation in the form of sending a book, because they may think, you know, by coming of Jesus, there is no more uh, no revelations in the form of books and prophets. God revealed himself, you know, in his son. So they have this idea. But at the same time, they have the idea that the gift of prophethood, prophethood in the sense of someone is inspired by God to prophesy. So some of them believe prophet was a prophet in this sense, means God inspired him. Uh, one, one, uh, one more last question for today since it is all around the same subject. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Do we have any data or description of the events before the ascension of Jesus? What does it mean when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it was, it was made uh, to look for them like it? Uh, should be mm. Do Shia sources have any descriptions of events leading to during this time and after? We have, uh, you know, some uh, writings, especially in Qasas al Quran, you know, and some hadith. Uh, but uh, if we want, we can discuss it another time. So that I mm, just don't use my memory and I can uh, bring the text. But a uh, typical, I'm not saying this is the only interpretation, but uh, the typical interpretation is that in Muslim books is that Shubmaqat, because Quran says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَّبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ They say the person who actually had betrayed and reported to the Romans where is Jesus because they were after him uh, the person himself uh, was uh, at that night looking like Jesus so maybe Allah made a kind of uh, transformation or a way that you know or, or maybe he took the dress of for example you know Jesus and they had for example suppose they had said okay Jesus has this color of dress for example and he had that one uh, by mistake or you know maybe Jesus gave him for example that dress and he couldn't say no you know we don't know all these details but anyway somehow when they came to arrest him, they arrested that person. And some of the things that also they say that Jesus said uh, on the cross would not match Jesus. Maybe this person was saying them, you know. In any case, the mm, f very famous interpretation by Muslims is that instead of Isa alayhi salam, they took that person and Allah uh, Allah raised Isa of course Christians also believe that 
Isa was raised, but they say he was raised after he was crucified. We say he was raised without being crucified, but we both believe that he was raised. But uh, if you want uh, to have a comprehensive discussion, then I have to you know, go to the text and bring some texts. Thank you very much, Sheikh Nalkarin. Thank you. You're welcome. I would very much appreciate uh, this beautiful uh, discussion on Mubahala. And it's, it's interesting that a lot of times when you're on these trips, it also ends up being uh, Eid al Mubahala. Hmm. A few times this has happened. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah give you tawfiq. 